So I just wanted to give a really big shout out to everyone who came out to my Brooklyn meetup earlier this month. I had a lot of fun meeting you guys in person. For me, one of the highlights was actually getting to meet a bunch of my cohort four students in person. And I just had a blast getting to share more about working in data. One of the things that came up was the challenge of knowing when exploratory data analysis or EDA is good enough for a stakeholder. And this is such a crucial skill. I would say about 30 to 40% of an early career data analyst job, the first few years on the job is EDA. And so a big differentiator for standout analysts is having a structured approach to EDA that then directly translates to insights for stakeholders. Something I've also noticed is that when students in my program really lock down this skill, they get a lot more confident about their ability to stand out in the job market because they have a skill that directly translates to real value for businesses. So this is also a key trait that I look for as a hiring manager as well. So today I want to break down a framework that is going to teach you to think like a data analyst when it comes to EDA. We're going to talk about things like a request from a stakeholder, a really simple EDA framework, four types of analysis questions, and then tips that you can immediately apply to your own projects so that you do not get lost in a rabbit hole of analysis. By the way, the next 20 person cohort of my mentorship program, the Analytics Accelerator, is now open to applications for the next cohort starting in January. So check out the link below if you are interested in joining me in a small group info session where I'll share more about how exactly I help my students land their first job in data. So let's imagine we're working as a data analyst at an e-commerce company and the head of operations sends us a request to get help for the upcoming town hall. And here's what something like that might look like. Hi data team, the leadership team is preparing for the company-wide town hall next month and would like to present a retroactive look at sales trends during the peak COVID years. Can you help us understand the following? What are the overall trends in sales during this time period? What are our monthly and yearly growth rates? How is the new loyalty program performing and should we keep using it? And what are our refund rates and average order value? I'll set a meeting next week to discuss your findings. Looking forward to reviewing. So as a data analyst, I'd actually first start with brainstorming a few questions. For example, what should I clarify about the request with the stakeholder to make sure that I can deliver everything that she needs on time? What's the business context for an ask like this and who's the audience? We know a little bit about that already, but is there any other information that we should know about? Which metrics and dimension are crucial to the analysis and also where can I access the data that I need? This is all part of a phase that we call requirements gathering, which is where you probably have a meeting or at least a few messages back and forth with the stakeholder to just clarify some of these questions before diving into to the analysis. I'm going to leave that as food for thought right now though and skip ahead to the juicy part which is the actual analytical thinking. So something I see in new data analysts all the time is imposter syndrome and it's totally normal but it comes from not having confidence that what you know can be applied to a variety of different situations. But just remember that with a framework you can apply your knowledge to a variety of different kinds of problems. So this is a very simple high level framework for EDA. Step one is to identify the question type. Step two is to break the big business questions down into smaller questions and then step three is to translate the questions to the technique. So so let's apply this framework to our example so that you get a sense of what I'm talking about. So as analysts, I would say we generally see about four main categories when it comes to exploratory analysis questions. The first one is overall trends. So for example, what are the overall trends in sales? And this is the process of telling the story of what happened by looking at historical values. Then there's growth rates. So what are our monthly and yearly growth rates? And this is a really common reporting request, which is calculating and summarizing what happened in the past by looking at the fluctuations that happen over different periods of time. Then there's performance measurement. So how is the loyalty program performing and what should we actually do about it? So this is where we start to get into prescriptive analysis, where you're looking at whether or not something is good or bad and giving some recommendations about what to do next. And then lastly, there's KPI reporting. And so that's something like what are our refund rates or average order values? And this is just reporting on a specific metric at a specific point in time. So knowing the question type helps us focus on the right next steps because each of these bigger questions actually has a subset of smaller questions that we can then directly calculate using a technical tool. So you can think of these smaller questions as also belonging to four main buckets, seasonality, dimensionality, summary stats, and distributions. So let's look at how this actually works. For overall trends, so what are overall trends in sales, for example, seasonality would be answering questions like what are sales by time or month? 
Is there a pattern in terms of the specific months or seasons that perform the best? For dimensionality or dimensional segmentation, we also call it, what are sales by country, region, and product? So I'm basically just taking a metric and slicing it by the different dimensions or qualitative values. So insert your specific metric here and insert your specific qualitative values here as well. Summary stats is looking at descriptive stats like minimum, maximum, average, mode. So what months have the highest and lowest sales? which products or any dimension, any region, any country have the highest and lowest sales, and also what was the average sales across time. And then lastly for distribution. So which countries or product make up X percent of sales? Let's say which countries or product are responsible for the majority or 80% of our sales. So with distribution, this is where I'm just taking a metric and slicing it by a specific dimension to understand how that dimension makes up the overall piece of the pie. So for example, are there specific regions that take up the most percent of sales? And are there specific regions that make up very little of our sales? Overall, all of these smaller questions are helping us get a better and more concrete understanding of the overarching big picture question of what are our overall trends in sales. And then for growth rates, for example, seasonality would be asking questions like what are our monthly and yearly growth rates? And are there certain months or seasons where the growth rates tend to be specifically high or low? Dimensional segmentation would be things like what were the growth rates sliced by different dimensions? So sliced by different countries, sliced by different products. And then for summary stats, that's looking at things like which months have the highest growth or the lowest growth? Or what is the average growth rate across a specific year where I'm looking again at the minimum, the maximum, and the overall mean. So as a thought exercise, you can also take these four smaller buckets and see if you can apply it to the two other big buckets that we talked about, which is performance measurement and KPI reporting. You probably would not be working on all of these smaller questions when you're actually at work, since there are clearly a lot of smaller questions that can stem from an initial analysis. You could pretty much keep going forever if you wanted to. But this is where your soft skills as a data analyst comes in, because you'd actually be working with a stakeholder and collaborating with them to understand what are the specific smaller questions that you really Really want to focus in on. So let's take one sample question, the one about overall trends, and look at how we would start to dive into this in a tool like Excel. So I'm going to be looking into these two smaller questions. What were the seasonal trends in sales and also what were the monthly growth rates? So here's a really simple example of how I started to explore these two questions in Excel. First, I made a pivot table where I calculated three different sales metrics. So I was looking at total sales, average order value and count of orders, where I'm using a little bit of domain knowledge here to understand there is a bunch of different ways to actually look at this total sales metric. And then I rolled everything up to the monthly level because usually with seasonality, we would start with something like a monthly view, especially if our data spans a few years. And then I calculated the growth rates. So I have monthly values and monthly growth rates. And I knew I wanted to look at the overall trends and identify which months and seasons did well or badly. So then I used conditional formatting to highlight those ups and downs. So I could at least just start to eye all the data and get a sense for which months consistently do well or poorly. Then I calculated some very simple summary stats where I'm just looking at the maximum of these three main metrics. Obviously, I could have also calculated the minimum, identified the highest and lowest months, and also the overall average. And then I created a really simple, clean line graph of total sales across these years so that I could also just visually see what the ups and downs were, and I highlighted the maximum and the minimum point. So in just a few simple clicks, I have a lot of findings that I can then start to pull out and bring back to a stakeholder. Notice I'm not actually using that many fancy algorithms here. I haven't even touched SQL or Python, I'm actually just using really practical approaches to create a table, calculations and formatting that then really easily surfaces patterns that I can then translate to someone else. I would say about 70% of exploratory analysis, at least the first year or so on the job, can be tackled by things like pivot tables, conditional formatting, graphing, so line graphs, bar graphs, area charts, scatter plots, and summary stats and aggregation functions. You can, of course, get fancier than this. There's so much more that you could be doing in SQL and Python, but also just remember that in the beginning, the fancier you get, the less understandable and interpretable your output will be by a non-technical stakeholder. In this case, there's just three technical concepts that I used, right? There's the pivot table, the conditional formatting, and also the aggregation functions and the calculations to do the summary stats and the growth rates. You can easily learn some of these concepts on other videos on YouTube. It's really actually the thought process of translating that big question down to a bunch of smaller questions that really directed my approach. So I'm skipping ahead a little bit here because the insights gathering process definitely deserves its own separate video, but just to give you some inspiration and a benchmark for what a sample insight could look like, I would say something like this based on the analysis that I already pulled out. 
During 2019 to 2022, our sales peaked in December 2020 with 4K orders totaling 1.2 million monthly revenue. This corresponds with the boom in economy-wide spending due to pandemic-induced changes in consumer behavior. But since then, total sales have continued to trend downwards towards pre-COVID levels, with a holiday season spike in September and November that we saw in 2020 and 2021, but not in 2022. This lack of a holiday peak is something we could look into to understand whether there are drivers behind this dip. I could then put this into an executive summary or a quick email that I send back to my stakeholder to highlight what my findings were. If you want to see the exact email that I would actually send to a stakeholder and how I actually do this communication process, just leave me a comment with stakeholder insights below. And if I get 50 comments in the next week or so, I will make a video walking through this communication process step by step. So if you're just starting out, framers can still feel pretty open-ended. So I just want to leave you with a few tips on how to take this exploratory analysis framework and make it practical for yourself and avoid analysis paralysis. One, spend one to two hours actually cleaning and understanding the data and then time box yourself and move on to the analysis. Because remember, you can always revisit this step. And I have a video about data cleaning if you want to check that out. Then propose a business question, like one of the high level questions that I showed you above and pick one or two of the smaller questions that you want to answer. For example, if you have a data set on company revenue, maybe your high level big picture question could be what are the overall trends in revenue? And then your smaller questions would be something like what are the seasonal patterns or monthly patterns in revenue? And what were the yearly growth rates in revenue? Then spend about four to six hours answering these questions directly in a technical tool using pivot tables, charts, conditional formatting and aggregation functions. Then spend one to two hours actually looking at your analysis and observing what you've discovered and pulling out the different findings and insights and giving high level recommendations. You can document this in a GitHub readme and I show you an example of how to do this in my readme video. So having a really solid grasp on EDA is one of the first fundamental layers of thinking like an analyst and it is 100% something that you will also get tested on when it comes to the interview process. This process of EDA and thinking more like an experienced data analyst is something that we dive into much, much more in my mentorship program where we practice all of this in a real world setting so that you can really stand out in the job market today. So if you are interested in taking your technical skills to the next level, check out the description below to find out more about the info session that I'll be hosting soon. And I will see you in the next video.